Hi, I'm Dr. Phil Harris, and today I'd like to talk about the internal rate of return, or IRR, what it is, what you can use it for, and how you calculate it. And I have a simple capital budgeting problem here, and it starts out with a discount rate, which is typically the weighted average cost of capital. In other words, that's the mix of the cost of debt and the cost of the equity um, that a firm has to raise funds. So in order to raise funds for a new project, this is the cost that the firm would incur as a percentage. Okay, so then we start off with an initial investment at time zero. Time zero means today. And this is what we have to invest, and it's negative because it's money going out. And then we have the next seven periods with positive cash flows from the investment. Okay, so we want to know, should we invest in this or not? So in Excel, it's quite simple. You simply put your cursor in the box that you want the internal rate of return to go into. And you click up above where it says Insert Function. And it opens up this Insert Function box. And typically, you would just type your function in here and click Go. And it would bring it up here. It's already here. And then you highlight this and you click OK and then it opens up a function box for IRR it tells you what it is and simply where it says values you highlight the values you want to include in here which is the values for period 0 through 7 and it gives the cell addresses C5 through C12 here and it puts the numbers out to the right exactly like what you have here and then it gives you a fractional value here of 0.23089 or a percentage rate which is your internal rate of return which is 23.09 percent in this case you click OK and that inserts it in your cell okay well that's all well and dandy but you know what does this all mean and how does Excel calculate it so let me switch over here to my pen and okay I think we're ready I'm gonna give you the function or the uh, formula to write this out so simply we're gonna take the sum of all the cash flows from period 0 through n and divide it by a discount factor which is 1 plus the internal rate of return to the nth power or from n through 0 and all this has to equal an NPV where NPV equals 0 that's what internal rate of return is in a formula Another way you could write it is NPV equals zero, which equals the initial investment, which is at time zero, plus the sum of all the cash flows from period one. Well, I should erase that. Let me do it again. Cash flows from period. Well, we'll just go from zero to one. Actually, what I I have the cash flow of zero here, so we really want to go from one to seven. So let's put one to seven in this case, divided by one plus IRR. What happened to my I? R, R to the nth power. Or maybe a better way to even say it so that you understand it is the same as here. NPV equals zeros, the cash flow for the initial investment, plus the cash flow for period one divided by one plus the IRR. for period one plus the cash flow for period two 
discounted by the internal rate of return, which would be for period two. And then simply we can do this up to the cash flow for period seven, which is one plus IRR to the seven. I don't know if I can get it in here. I guess I can't, but I think you can understand it. And what we're trying to solve for, if I change my pen color, if I come back up here, I'll use a different color for this. So let's use a, maybe a green here. This is what we're solving for. We're solving for the internal rate of return. That's the unknown. We know all the other pieces. We've got our cash flows. We've got our discount rate. Oh, we don't need the discount rate because that's what we're solving for. We, But we have our cash flows and we have our initial investment. And now we want to come up with our internal rate of return, which is what this 2309 down here is in our Excel worksheet. Whoops. I can't get it in the right place. It's this amount right here. That's what we want to solve for. Okay. So let's go back to our Excel. I'm going to get rid of my pen here. And. Um, I got to close out and come back into Excel. And in the next column, we're going to put our, our formula in here. So it's going to be E or our equal sign times um, our discount rate. And we're going to take that times, which is an asterisk in Excel, 1 plus I'm sorry, I started this wrong. We need to multiply our, our uh, present value times the asterisk, 1 plus our discount rate, and we need to anchor this because otherwise it's going to just keep moving down and we don't want to do that. So in order to anchor this, you got to, in Excel, put a dollar sign before both the letter and the number, and that's going to anchor us. And then to raise something to a power we use that sign and until I think it's called the tilde or whatever it's called and then we're gonna raise it to the minus because we're discounting zero power and that should give us 853 and it does and now since this is anchored we can take this factor and copy it down to all our other values and simply paste it in and this is what I would expect to find the 227 is more than the 199 so we're discounting based on this 14 percent rate we know that's not right because we know it's 2309 it's got to be something higher but uh, let's say we didn't have this and we wanted to take yes well we probably um, well, before we do that, let, let me first add these all up. Okay, and you can see it gives this value down here is a positive 264.15. And what is that value? Well, it turns out that's the net present value, and it's positive. And if you study capital budgeting, anything with a positive net 
present value you should you should accept. So it looks like a good project, um, but we want to test out our formula over here. And so what we could do is we could raise our discount rate, and that should make the net present value less, right? So let's say I go up to 20% still have a positive net present value so that's not right let's try 25 percent and see what we get okay now it's negative so it's got to be somewhere between 20 and 25 percent so i'm going to guess at 23. now we're very close and if we make this 23.09 if we just insert a point of point oh nine up here you can see it comes out to what Excel calculated in that formula. And that's what Excel does. It's an iterative process. It goes, it tries to find out the, the value where NPV equals zero. And this 0.01 is just rounding. So don't worry too much about that because that's all it is. And this is very precise in Excel. So it does a good job. And if I go back to uh, my ink pen, I want to, because I kind of skipped over it kind of fast, I, w I just want to show you that the formula I used, let me get my pen back here, and I'll change the color again, let's use a, maybe a nice blue here this time. The present value, whoops, I didn't want to do it there. I want to do it down here. That's not right either. I want to do it down here. The present value equals the future value um, times 1 divided by 1 plus IRR or whoops, I don't want to do that either. It's actually one plus one plus r to the nth power times our present or well we already did times our future value. So okay. And an easier way to write that is if we come down here. down here. Present value equals the future value and I'm just going to multiply 1 plus our rate to the minus n. And what that does, it simply gets rid of this 1 divided by and it simplifies the formula. And that's exactly what we did if we go back to Excel. So if I go back to my Excel here, and we look at our formula, that's exactly what we did. So that's how internal rate of return works. That's how you evaluate a project. You have the formula. You know what it all means. And I hope this was informative. We'll see you in the next slide. Thank you.